HBWC Nation, what a joyous day it is to celebrate our Lord and King. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift him up and just begin to open up our mouths and give him a praise today. Hallelujah. Glory and honor is due to his name, and we come to give it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless your name. Hallelujah.
bless you today. Father, we're asking for your perspective, that you will open the eyes of our hearts today, that we will see you high and lifted up all across this land, all across this nation, even in our homes, oh God, because we want to see Oh, we want to see you. Hallelujah. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, I want to see you. Yeah. I want to see you. Let me say it again. Open the eyes of my heart. this morning sing open the eyes the eyes of my heart this day give God your heart ask him to open I want to see I want 
Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your power and your love, Lord God. We thank you for your power and your love, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, during these times, Lord God. God, see your people high, God. See your people lifted up, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. All glory and honor, Lord God, is due to your name, Lord God. God, we submit every praise, Lord God, to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we submit all the authority to you right now, oh God, in our land. We submit all of authority to you in our region, in our community, over our nation. God, we decree and declare, Lord God, that we shall see you. We shall see you high and lifted up in the name of Jesus. God, let us see. Let us see. Let us see you, God. Let us see you, God. Let us see you, God, during these times. Let us see you, God, during this pandemic. Let us see you, God, during this coronavirus. Let us see. Let us see. Let us see you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, touch your people. Heal your people, God. Grace us with your presence. Anoint us for your presence, Lord God. Grace us. Grace us in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift you up, God. We lift you up, God. Touch us now. Touch us now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we decree and declare, Lord, that no weapon, no sickness, no disease shall form against us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And it won't be able to prosper. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you honor on this great day, God. But you are Jehovah God. You are Jehovah Nisan. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. And it's due to your name. And we shout amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, HBWC Nation. Give us some glory. All right, HBWC Nation, boy, Pastor Levi Rosie, I know that you enjoyed that worship experience on this morning. It was powerful. It was electric. And God is still moving and doing some powerful things in the earth. Uh, we're excited because we're in this sermon series called Men with a Message. They're trying to acknowledge some of our men during this Father's Day month. But this message is not just for our men. It's not a patriotic or um, uh, male show. This message It's a message for everybody around the world to know that we all have a message. We all got something to say, something we need to say, especially when the power of God is in us and on us. I know you're like, Pastor, what in the heck going on with this stage? What's going on? You're going to find out in a minute how we want to bring something different but speak volume to you at the exact same time. So first of all, I'm going to give you some, a, I'm coming from Mark, um, the 11th chapter, 15 through 17. And the guys are going to probably display that text for you a little bit. I'm going to give you some um, a quote, give you an analogy, and then we're going to preach this word uh, um, uh, best I can for all you around the world. But the quote I'm going to use right now is from T.L. Lewis. It said, a great thing, if, if one can, is to stop regarding all the unpleasant thing as interruption, catch the word, interruption of one's own or real life. The truth is, of course, that one that what one calls the interruption are precisely one's real life. The life God is sending one day or uh, one day by day. That's by C.L. Lewis talking about interruption. Now the text I'm gonna come from is in Mark 11, 15 through 17 and it reads this way mark 11 15 said and they came and they come to jerusalem being jesus and his, and his guys he entered into the temple entered into the temple which we would call the church right now and began to cast out those them that sold and them that brought in the temple and in, in verse 16 and overthrew the table of the money changer and the seat of them that sold the dove. And he could not suffer that any man would carry a, a vessel through the temple. Then verse 17, it said, and he talked and said to them, it is, not, it, is it not written, guess the text, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nation, but ye have made it into a den of now, this whole sermon series is about men with a message. You'll see more as we matriculate and walk through our Wednesdays and Sundays, how we are moving with this message, how this message is for everybody. But today's message today is bringing uh, interrupt the disruption. I want God to interrupt this disruption. Now, of course, we did this stuff here on purpose. We brought this in and we laid this stuff down. This is what we call organized chaos. This is organized chaos and and it's going to make sense what i'm trying to go to with this message and sometimes god will allow god bring interruption 
to a disrupted situation. That's why we got Jesus' name behind us. Because even though it's all a disrupted place, what brings clarity, God had to interrupt my disruption. My stuff was already messed up. I know I'm already giving the end of my message before I start my message. And that's okay. That's okay. What I like for us to do now as men, women of God, children around the world, you have a message. You have a voice that you need to say. And there could be disruption around you. And now God is telling us it is time for you and I, by the grace of God, to bring into to interruption to this disruption. Hear what I'm saying? Bring interruption to this disruption. Well, Pastor, what is disruption? Disruption is what we call uh, chaos. It's called uh, disorder. It means turmoil or something that's really discombobulated. Out of, out of, just out of, right? That's messed up. Well, Jesus himself in this text in Mark 11, 15, the Bible said they were coming toward the temple. It was coming toward the temple. It was coming toward the temple. And while Jesus walking toward the temple, he knew how the temple should look. This, this is not how our stage should look. Our stage is not, not, not this, like the trust land here, the trust land there. This is not really how our stage should be looking. Now, even though we got this stage like this, if you're not careful, our stage will come normal if nobody bring interruption to this disruption. It will become our normalcy if we don't stop and say or speak or somebody say, now this is not how this is supposed to look. And here's where I'm going with this word because right now with all the, nef the, the, the nefessitudes in, uh, in our life and the fairest stuff happening around our country, there's a disruption in our country that we must bring interruption to. If we don't do that, what may that means that we've allowed the, the, the disruption to become our normalcy. Racism is not our normalcy. Division shouldn't be our normalcy. Black and white on one side should not be our normalcy. But I'm afraid it's a silent storm underneath our country that has become our normalcy. And so somebody, God is raising a prophet, priest, Son, daughter, in position to bring interruption to our disruption. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Bring interruption to our disruption because this is not how our stage should look. You, if, your, if, your, if your child is cussing the, 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 the leaders out, that's not how our stage should look. When God, when God brought your son out, your, your daughters out, and they start dealing with life and they become their normalcy, that's not how... They stay to look. God did not put them on that platform called life to do life with him that all of a sudden they're smoking dope like no other. That's not how a stage should look. Where well, a well, boy like another boy, that's not how the stage should look. Now, I'm not condemning nobody. Hear my heart right now. But have it become our normalcy that we now, the disruption that we have, it's our normalcy. And we don't want to bring interruption to this disruption. And that's what God has did. That's what he's doing now. He's coming to a place, to his temple, because he knows how his temple should look. Uh -huh. He knew how the temple should look. Now, to you and I, that this is not normal. This, those that come to church at HPWC, now you know this is not our normalcy. This is not our normalcy. But if you're not careful, it can be your normalcy if nobody bring voice to it or interrupt the, it, this disruption. So Jesus come along and go walk around and the Bible said he goes into the temple and he see thieves, he see folk gambling, he see folk going money, so money changes. Because in the temple, right, in the temple, in the temple court, in the temple court, they would, they would have to make sacrifices. They had to buy lamb, and they had to make sacrifices. They burned it. They burned the, burned, they burned the lamb on the altar. So here's what would happen. They would, in turn, because they had to burn uh, sacrifice on the altar, the only place you could buy it at was the temple. And so they, 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 they jacked the prices up. It's called they jacked the prices up that they had to only buy it from them, that the priest themselves, pastor themselves, worship leader themselves, were getting money on the backside 
of their behavior. Maybe, maybe, we won't enter, maybe, Pastor, maybe, Dr. King, maybe, maybe, the boys, maybe, we're not, I hear you, I hear, I hear you now in my head. Now, maybe we don't bring interruption to disruption because it may disrupt what I got going on with them. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I'm benefiting from the chaos. Maybe, maybe somebody's getting paid on the backside of my poverty. Maybe somebody is benefiting from my pain. Maybe somebody is benefiting from black on black crime. Maybe somebody is benefiting from my bad behavior. Maybe because, because, maybe because you're benefiting from it, you won't bring attention to it. Oh, maybe I may be, my position may be threatened. Maybe the test scores are not going up in our school system. I might be benefiting from it. Oh, it's time for us to bring interruption to this disruption. It cannot be our normalcy. We cannot go to sleep on our watch and say, God, help me. And God, it's just not my time. I'm just not, I don't want to get involved. My sister, my brother, if you don't get involved, you are involved. Uh-huh. If you don't say something, you are saying something. If you are a believer, black, white, rich, or poor, if we don't bring a, dis, a if we don't interrupt this disruption, this become our normalcy. I don't want my kids to live in this normalcy where a black brother can get killed any time because he got stopped by a police officer. That's not our normalcy. But I'm afraid, guys, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation we got to have, that this, not, this shouldn't be our normalcy. I don't want to call the demagogy where I'm trying to get you to get angry, get on my side and, push, and go push something. What I'm trying to get you is wake up everybody, especially our Christian brothers and sisters. Listen, it is time for us to interrupt this disruption. That's what Jesus came for. He came that he may interrupt my disruption. He came that I may not put a gun to my head. He came that I may, I was on my way to hell. I was headed to a disrupted place and he interrupted my disruption, my disruption, my disruption that I call normalcy. But let's go to this text again. Watch what Jesus does. He walked into the temple and he sees stuff based on his construct, was not normal. Now, here, baby, now, we just walk in the room and say, wait a minute, why, or did, why is this here? Why is this here? Now, it's amazing to us that when Jesus comes in, and he, the Bible says he turned over tables. Well, Pastor, isn't that disruption? Well, that's the thing about it. Your disruption is not his disruption. Uh -huh. The devil will you reverse psychology on you. The Bible said Jesus got angry. He was, had a righteous indignation. He was like, wait a minute. That is not the house of prayer. That is not where, that's where we go to worship at. How dare y'all turn where, where I get fed at into a place of, of gossip? How dare you? This is where I get my breakthrough at? And you can do anything in the sanctuary? This is where, this is where people go and get the answers to their prayers and you turn it into something else? This is where our children go to school and learn? And you mean to tell me we've turned this into something else? This is where my child go to daycare and we turn this into something else? This is where people come to America, the land of the free and the promise, and we turned it into something else. Or maybe it was always that from the beginning. Maybe, just maybe it was already disrupted before we got here. Maybe, maybe, maybe nobody want to interrupt stuff because it may call back like on their side. So Jesus come in. Hey, bye-bye. He comes in in the temple and see and says, this is not right. So Jesus turned over tables, knocked down the money, caused confusion. He interrupt the disruption. Because, <laughs> see, what they thought, they thought, they thought, I'm going to get the forehead guy. They thought because the table chair was upright, that was correct. Uh-huh. Jesus came in and said, just because you sitting upright, don't mean you not causing a disruption. Just because, share bye bye. Just because, just because you are, you look good, don't make you good. So Jesus come in and appear to me that 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 there's no disruption. Jesus see it from the spiritual eye and said, No, this is not. Even that because your chair is upright, 
don't mean you right. Just because, just because so-and-so said it, don't make them right. Just because they said I'll be, I'll, I'll be broke, don't make them right. Just because they said I would never get out of debt, don't make them right. Just because they said I'll be a bad father, don't make them right. I don't care how much money in the bank, what, what, what title you got, if you don't speak over my life what God said, that don't make you right. Just because you're a black man, don't make it right. Make you a white man, don't make it right. What do God say about my life? What do I need men with the message that interrupt my destruction? But Jesus come in and he sees his tables upright. He sees the men sitting upright. And here's what Jesus does. Jesus calls to disrupt. <laughs> Jesus called an interruption. He said, I'm about to interrupt this disruption because this is not, this is not, this is not what my, he said, and when he did this, nobody would touch him. What you mean, pastor? Nobody touched him. I can't promise you that while I'm having church. There's somebody come in and tell about chairs and our table. My security team may lock them up. Just take them and call 911. I can't promise you that people won't go to jail or go somewhere if you come in our sanctuary, start turning over tables, turning over chairs, and somebody don't grab you and call you a lunatic. I can't promise you that. I can't promise you that. But here's what Jesus does. Jesus come in the house of God, flip over tables because you made my church something I never meant for it to be. You created a worship sound that was not my sound. You preached sermon that was not my sermon. You did stuff out of your own flesh and you been it from the pastor. You got more money in your pocket, but you didn't preach no word. You was a superstar. You got you made folks like what you say, but you didn't get me. So I come to call a disrupt some Jesus coming to teams and I came to clean up my house. Maybe God have emptied our churches for a reason. Maybe, maybe, maybe he want to bring back order. Maybe, maybe he's bring, he's, he interrupted our disruption. Maybe we haven't had nobody get healed with sick and hit, who was sick and got healed in a long time. That's a disruption. Maybe somebody had cancer and hadn't got delivered in a long time. Maybe that's a disruption. And Jesus said, when I come back, when my church come back, they come back on fire. They come with the anointing because I'm going to bring an interruption oh, oh, to this disruption. So therefore, when Jesus turned over the table, the Bible said, turn over the table. Nobody said a word to him. Nobody said a word to him about what he had done. Because what he did was he aggravated their conscience. Oh, that's what he did. He aggravated their conscience because you know, you know and I know, if he had came in your house and turned over your table, you'd be called, you'd be, you'd be upset. Jesus come along, throw over stuff, turn over stuff. And he said, I'm called a, a dis, I'm calling it, I'm coming to bring interruption to your disruption. And what the Bible's talk about is that he did all this, nobody said nothing. I would love to have been there when they started straightening it back up. Uh-oh, when they start straightening it back up. Because now this table, this table don't go brother, like this no more. This table not go, the chair go down here. Uh-oh. When God comes in and interrupts a, this disruption, now he does this on purpose that you may be able to identify what he really called you to do. When God come along and interrupt a disruption, you call it chaos, but he called it, he called it his peace. You call it confusion, but he called it peace. Because he's like, you're, you're not made to gamble. You're made to give off an entire. You're not made to have sex with five women. You're made to have one wife. You're not made that way, man. Mr. Police officer, you're not made to wear a badge to put a guy on the ground to kill him. You're not made that way. You're not made that way. You're not made that way. But until we bring interruption to this disruption, guys, we will continue to have this being our normalcy. Until we, until we be men and women with messages, not just trying to be, be, get our Facebook pages full of followers, but to a place where we start saying to ourselves, I'm willing to be the one to interrupt this disruption. You may not like Jesus. You may not like Jesus. I, I'm not coming in to be in your fanfare because you had enough of that going on. I come to bring interruption to disruption. Here's the thing about me. I love my, my father and God. Here I know why I know that this is what's going on because when I was, when I, when I was, when I was a sinner, I was a sinner. I loved sinning. I didn't play games of sinning. I'm not going to tell you I hated sinning because I liked it. I was, that's why I did it. I liked it. But here I understand right now that even when I was sinning, I had called low self-esteem issues. I, I didn't like talking in front of people. Now, I, was, I talked a lot, but in front of people was not my thing. I had, I had dealt with some 
very daddy issues, that kind of stuff. And so trying to raise kids, all that kind of stuff, and just having some issues in my life. And so here's what Jesus does for me. He comes along and he, I get him into my heart. And so in my heart, I got stuff like daddy issues. I got stuff like low self-esteem in my life. I got stuff in my life I'm dealing with, in my head, I'm dealing with. And hear what Jesus does for me, and I'm hoping he does this for you. What he does is, he, when I accept him into my heart, and I receive Holy Spirit into my heart, and what Jesus come along and do, even though I am saved, just because I'm saved, I may still be a drunk. Just because I'm saved, I may still have five girlfriends and sleep with them every night. Just because I'm saved, I got struggles. So what Jesus come to do and, and come in my heart and the Holy Spirit grabs me, here's what he does. He get into my heart. I get in his word. I start praying more. And while I'm praying more, he flip over that in my life. Hey, he interrupts my, that very thing that's destroying me, he interrupts it. He flips it over in my life. The very pain you're feeling right now, I'm praying he come inside of you right now and turn it upside down. He turn up your marriage upside down. He turn your relationship upside down. That when you get back right side up, share my mama, you where God needed you to be because he's going to clean you up. Don't try to clean it up yourself. Don't try to fix that trust by yourself. Don't try to fix that table by yourself. Cause the, that's why you got saved for. You can't do. You was already damaged before you got saved. And what's going on now, we're trying to fix this stuff by ourselves. Allow Holy Spirit to come in and rearrange your life back. Dad, you can't be a good dad on your own. You need God to come alongside and rearrange your life. Holy Spirit got to put this thing back together for you. He, he said, my house. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Therefore, my house, was a, my house was already called a house of prayer before you got there. You made it into something else. Man of God, woman of God, child of God, African-American, Caucasian, you are God's best in the earth. Stop acquiescing yourself down to racism. Stop acquiescing yourself down to, to thinking there's one side of us. There's no more. There's no more of that. We come to bring interruption to this disruption. We're going to speak voice. We're going to speak to truth, to power. We're going to speak against what's wrong. Churches, just don't be quiet no more. We got to raise our hands up and say, God, help us bring interruption to this disruption. Help us right now. We, if two minutes, we're too, too much, God. We're at the same place. We're the same fight. I'm not saying all these demons are going to go away because we decided to, to speak up and speak out. But it should, it should not, this should not be I would normally say, this should not be people of God. Hear my heart right now. I'm pleading with you. This should not be our normalcy. We've been here too long. We're not even two months out. You had one boy killed in Glen County. Now you got one killed in Minneapolis by police officers. We should not be here. This cannot be and continue to be our normalcy. We got to bring interruption to this disruption. We got to begin to speak out against this stuff. We got to... Begin to put right people in office. Stop putting folks in office because they fit your agenda. Stop putting folks in the White House because they fit your agenda. Do they fit God's agenda? God, bring interruption to our disruption. Stop, time. stop, stop, stop receiving those lies that, that, that God don't love you. He does. He came to bring interruption to your disruption. The Bible said once he did all this, once he brought damage to all this stuff, because to me, if you ask me, I think Jesus... You the one that bring a disruption, and that's not true. God said your life is already, that's already disruption. I just hate sometimes it becomes your normalcy. When people start saying stuff like, you know, that's how I am, because you just allow your, that's your normalcy. Don't make no excuses no more. That's not how you are. That's how you choose to be or choose to stay. And he's saying don't do that to yourself. Allow God in your heart. I don't care where you're around the world. If you are born racist, you don't have to stay that way because somebody taught you that. Racism is learned. Hear me well. Racism is a learned habit. You don't come out your mama womb hating black folk or hating white folk. You're learning that from somebody. Somebody taught you that, 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 that one race is better than another. Somebody teaching us that. Somebody entitled for something and they're not. Classism, we're taught that. Nobody, we, we taught that as a child. We've taught that. And so therefore, God is saying, I came to bring interruption. 
to this disruption. Hit my heart. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel and truth. I'm trying to aggravate your spirit, man of God, woman of God, child of God, schoolmate. I'm, we, we, we divide on so many issues, black, white, classism. Now we divide ourselves up between baby boomers, you know, Gen X, you know, the millennials, Gen-Z, all of us. Baby, when we, when we all come together and God bring unity and strength and we begin to bring interruption to disruption. That's what God is saying to me right now, telling you to invite you to the table to help him bring interruption to the disruption. Before you can start that child of God, woman of God, you got to first let him bring it to you. Before, our, before we can change the mayor's office, we got to change us. Before we can change any government system and this, this, this diabolical system that we have in our judicial system, it's the best we got probably in the world, but it's also full of hate. It's full, of, it's full of racism, it's full of classism, and it's, and, it, and it's unfair that the people who have the less money or of different color are suffering behind it. If you're not careful, churches will be the same way. If you're not in the right church, right name, right money, right prestige, you may get left over, looked over. I bound that spirit now. Allow God in our heart and ask God to forgive all of us that he may bring an interruption to our disruption. Forgive us what we thought. We allow stuff to be our normalcy. Our normalcy. This cannot be our normalcy. Somebody must bring an interruption to this disruption. So God, I'm asking you right now, as everybody watching me on Facebook Live, well, HBCW Nation, if they stay in the God, where they'll shed his pay, I don't know. I don't know where it be seen around the world, God, but help us bring an interruption to this disruption. That's what Jesus came for. He came for that. That's why we got his name behind me right now. He came for that. If I was already right, I would need him. That's why he came and died on the cross to interrupt my disruption. And the day I was seized in my heart, he started to work in me. When he immediately came into my heart, I became brand new. I, in my heart, I became brand new. I wasn't doing brand new stuff yet. Hear what I said? I became brand new but I was not doing brand new stuff yet. Other words, he, he called me what I would be before I got there. I'm on now. Before I became, before, I'm, so I'm still becoming a good husband. I'm still becoming a good pastor. I'm still becoming a good Christian. Even when he's calling me a good Christian, he called me holy, but I'm still walking in holiness. So he's calling me something that I'm still having, I haven't arrived at yet. Because he's still pulling me, cleaning me up, changing my lifestyle, changing my habits, putting stuff back in order, put me back in place. If left to me, I would have stayed where I was living at, but God moved me somewhere else. But God had to interrupt my disruption. So I like God, before I get offline today, I want to pray with you to aggravate you. You got to talk about, you got to ask God where we are, our unity as a nation, pastor, lawyer, judge, housewife, cast, shield, whoever you are right now, prophet. Evangelists, preachers, evangelists, put down, put down your, your, put down those, 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 those prestige where you getting benef you're benefiting from bad habits. It's time for the brain, uh, interruption, the disruption. Tell God right now, stop what you're doing. Receive God in your heart right now. I know where you're at. I know it's painful. I know it don't make sense. You can have a righteous indignation and God still can work in your life. I'm asking God right now to heal us of our pain, our hurt. Forgive our nation how we would allow this disruption to be our normalcy. God of God, forgive all of us. Help us now speak up, speak out, and call true, but bring Jesus, Holy Spirit, alongside to God to help us be a greater nation, a better country. When you bring our churches back to our platform, God, give us the wherewithal. Clean us up. Don't let us bring the same worship, the same sound, the same garbage, the same stuff we untolerated for years, God. Help us clean us up. So God, I'm asking you to heal us today. Bring our people back whole, God. When we come back, God, we, we could declare healing of our land. God, heal our nation. Heal Minnesota. Heal Glen County. People are still hurting from, even from slavery. Heal us. Heal us. We got folks in the Supreme Court, different judges' offices who are not bringing truth to power. I'm asking you, God, heal us. Deliver us. Bless our nation. If we're going to live here, ask God, to bring, look, ask God to look into our own cities, our own countries, our own neighborhood, our own law enforcement. Where is their disruption? And we would call it our normalcy. Father God, I thank you today for your Holy Spirit. 
for helping us to recognize, God, our own, our, own, our own failures, God. We thank you now, God. Clean us up. Come inside our hearts, God, and cause a interrupt our disruption. Turn our tables over. Turn our money changer. Turn our dirty dealing over, God. God, we thank you for healing us, healing our nation, heal our land. Give us wisdom how to proceed, how to speak, what to say, what to give our money to, God, how to help our community. God, we love you now, God. We also, God, those who around the world who are receiving you as their Lord and Savior and want you to come inside and turn over their tables. God, I ask you now, go into their heart. If you made that decision, child of God, tell God, turn the tables over in my life. Interrupt my disruption. I'm leaving God for you right now. You're going to make that decision. And please let us know. Email us, text us, text to join. However you choose, we're on this. We're doing life together. It's not a us and them. We're doing it together because Jesus is Lord. And of course, you know, for a guy, guy, get out of here, guys. We have a, a platform where people are giving and blessing this ministry and allowing us to speak truth to power. Because unfortunately, when people, we have money, we can do more things. We can speak truth to power. We can hit our community hard. And that's what we're doing. We're about God's kingdom business. So tithers, givers, often givers, give to the kingdom of God. So God, as they give today, I want you to cause a interruption in their disruption. Maybe people are, are making money and money going to the side, losing jobs. God, interrupt. Their disruption, God. As they sow seeds today, God, bless them wide, bless them deep. I bless it now, God. Cash out, text give, however you choose, allow God to move in your life. Again, we thank you so much for viewing us. I'm passionate about the kingdom of God. I'm passionate about our life being changed. If you need Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, or want more about what God is doing, let us know. Text us. We love you so much. Again, I'm Pastor Levi Rosier of HBWC Nation. We love you. We thank you. And we'll see you next time.